Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I think you say it best, Gary, when you say nothing at all. And I'm Gary, and today we're going to review and discuss Notting Hill, which released in 1999 from writer Richard Curtis and director Roger Mitchell. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Hugh Grant's character, Will Thacker. He's a bookshop owner living in London and has just gotten over his partner leaving him. He shares a house with a flatmate called Spike, played by Rice Evans. And one day he meets the beautiful Anna Scott, played by Julia Roberts. Anna is a world-renowned celebrity and a movie star. And their love starts to blossom when she sees a little sparkle in Will's eye. Will their love flourish or will it crash and burn? Did you enjoy making the film? Yes, I did. So this is a film that released now, what, 25 years ago? Yeah. And I have to say, I've not really thought much of the film in those 25 years. I never really thought (laughs) I'd go back and revisit it. Because, well, in the late 90s, I wasn't really into romantic comedies at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But I saw this one because, well, Hugh Grant was a pretty big British named star at the time. What, after the whole incident on Hollywood Boulevard? Oh, probably before, before and that. after, yeah, 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 <laughs> more yeah. so. Mm. And of course, Julia Roberts. I mean, like nine years before this, with Pretty Woman. Yeah, like I think <clears> everybody <throat> knew. I think everyone, everyone on the planet knew who Julia Roberts was after that movie. Yeah, and uh, just in- incredible. And especially considering she never even really wanted to be an actress. She wanted to be like a veterinarian, <laughs> and it was only because of well, her big brother getting into the movies that she followed suit. And yeah. I think I'm forever glad that she did decide to end up in movies. But yeah, like this film. It was pretty big when it came out, and and the, and I was curious. I was like, "Well, who was the guy who wrote it then?" Mm. And that that was the big clue as to the reason why I guess I've liked a lot of his projects. As I said, it was written by Richard Curtis, who is the creator of Mr. Bean. Mm, yeah, <laughs> and granted, Mr. Bean doesn't have a lot of writing, <laughs> but it is incredibly well constructed. Yeah, situational exactly. comedy. Yeah, exactly. But he was also one of the writers on Blackadder. Yeah, oh God, yes. The Vicar of Dibley. I mean, Love Actually is probably the most well-known like yes. British rom-com. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, he'd also worked on Spitting Image. Yeah. <laughs> and also, well, a few years ago, Genie, which <laughs> may not have done as well as his other works, but still, well, I'm a big has, fan of him. I was going to say, it has its fans, right? It does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, like you, I uh, was very surprised when I saw Notting Hill on our list. And I'm like, whoa, okay, you know, we're we're film reviewers. We're, we're not held by constraints. We don't look at a rom-com and go, ooh, we're not going to do that. We... But it was honestly also a bit of a breath of fresh air after some of the heavy going thematic kind of movies we've just oh, recently done. Yeah, totally. And, you know, I, I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, I would never normally watch this film. And we are exactly the same. But sometimes you just need a bit of warmth. S- yeah, something a bit of lightheartedness. You can't just be <laughs> surrounded by guns and blood all the time. You've got to have a bit of Julia Roberts in your life. Oh, my God. I have been a fan of Julia Roberts since... Since I first saw her in Sleeping with the Enemy, you know, like you said, Pretty Woman was pretty big. I remember Erin Brockovich when that dropped. That was a year after this. Yeah. She won the Oscar for that one. Yeah. And it was just like, wow, Julia Roberts is just a star. And I've always kind of pictured her as like a a modern day Aubrey Hepburn. Yeah. You know, just like, just like one of those kind of classical actresses, you know, you'd easily see Julia on stage if she wanted to be and stuff like that. She, to some people, she can be a bit wooden. Um, But I at at the same time sometimes I think that's just that's just the actor or actress being themselves and making this character like them Yes, they may not be as emoting as much as you want. I mean, I kind of feel the same with Hugh Grant I mean Pardon my French, but this dickhead came out of nowhere with four weddings and a funeral and like it was the biggest thing ever (laughs) Like and I was like really who the hell's this guy and I, I think he was in a Jane Austen story I don't think he was mr. Darcy, but one of the other guys and everyone was like, oh my God, he's so amazing. I was just like, who the fuck's Hugh Grant? Like, like I was young. I didn't know British actors at that time that much. And then then he was caught in the papers with that woman in that situation and got dumped by, you know, Elizabeth Harley. I was like, oh, I get him now. He's just <laughs> like me. 
And then they just started giving him more roles. And most recently, I remember seeing him in The Gentleman. Yeah, he's and really I, good. I, he's actually really good as a villainous character as well. He's kind of scary. Well, I, I at the same time, I saw some of Dungeons and Dragons yeah. and saw him in that. And I was like, okay, Hugh, maybe, maybe it was me. Maybe I didn't get you at this time. And so, like with this movie, it starts with, you know, Hugh Grant, Will Thacker kind of narrating to us, you know, his life. He lives in London, you know, he runs this little bookstore. Um, he bought a house with his girlfriend, uh, fiance, I think it was. They got married. Oh, got married, got sorry, yeah. Uh, well, she dumped him, didn't she, yeah, for, right. for another guy. Um, for a, um, an Indiana Jones, uh, Harrison Ford lookalike. <laughs> yeah, and so you don't really get much of a, a backstory for Will. I mean, I, I don't even think we even see his parents, do we? No. We just see his sister, uh, played by Emma Chambers, who plays Honey Thacker. And she'll she'll come in later on. But initially, we're just meeting up with Will, you know, seeing the inside of his life. Uh, like I said, Reese fans, who plays Spike, I think, is quite possibly the greatest thing of the entire movie. It is like, he's a great film like housemate but yes. he's not one you'd ever really want to live no, with no but he sets like his character pretty early on where he's like look, 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 i need your advice i've got a date tonight i've got two t-shirts to wear <laughs> yeah. which one should i wear and he comes down with one and it's just like pointing to his crotch and he's yeah. like yeah i think you're giving off the, the wrong impression with that one yeah so he comes back down with another one and he's like you're the most beautiful woman i've ever seen or alive <laughs> yeah. and he's like yeah you know what? i think that's more appropriate and as he's going up the stairs you just see the back of the shirt it's like okay 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 yeah this is, good. this is fine he definitely seems like a fun guy but at the same time i tried not he's to also question, a bit of a creep <laughs> yeah i tried not to question how he's paying his bills or how much money will has to be able to just because he says himself he's got this bookstore that that just kind of sells travel books but they don't really sell many travel books no and you've got James Dreyfus playing Martin, kind of his assistant in the shop. Yeah. You know, another and, great British comedy actor. Oh man, I loved him <laughs> in the Thin Blue Line. Gimme, 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 gimme! I just think, oh, he's, he's so good. Um, but it, he, at the same time, he's a bit of a creep. The way he just kind of hangs on Will, and he's like, "Shall I get you a cappuccino?" No, yeah, okay. <laughs> he's just really delicate. I, I know. Really <laughs> I love delicate. him in his cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a great guy. Um, but this is where Will would first meet Anna Scott. You know, she comes walking into the store. She's just looking at some books. You know, typical kind of famous celebrity walk around London. They've got the sunglasses on, the hat. They're a bit incognito. Yeah. Don't want to get recognised. You know, yeah. and I, I like the fact that Will actually doesn't recognise her. No, he recognises her, but he is like one of the few people that doesn't just gush immediately. Oh, right. He kind of tries to play it cool, yeah, yeah. but he also looks like a bumbling nerd. Yeah. But he also is immediately relatable because we would also like to like meet, you know, the most famous woman actress on the planet like walks into your life yeah. and you try to remain kind of You'd composed. Be a, be and he, he pulls it off. Yeah. He pulls it off better than I would have done. No, yeah, yeah. If I see Julia Roberts, I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> exactly. It'd just all be gibberish. Uh, but at the same time, he's also dealing with a potential shoplifter who's in the back stuffing a book. He watches on the security camera and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Scott. I need to go and deal with this for a second. Yeah. And we get this funny exchange where he's just like, I know you got the book. He's like, I haven't got no book. He's like, I've got the book. I'm going to call the cops. And he's like, well, what do I do? So you can either put the book back, wipe it down and <laughs> put it down, back or it. buy the book. And then he yeah. wanders back to talk to Anna again. And and yeah, Dylan Moran playing the, the thief. That's he comes right. up and he's questioning Anna for like you know, an autograph. autograph. And then she writes on it a little message telling him that he needs to be in jail. And, and Dylan Moran's just playing it off like, ha, 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 do you want to go out somewhere? And she's like, no. What does it say? That's my signature. And above it, it says, dear Rufus, you belong in jail. Good one. And and you initially you're you're a bit taken well, I was a bit taken back by just the way that kind of Will was easily able just to say, Okay, yeah, you know, here's your book, thanks long. You know, a little but bit of flirtatious, it, it, but it, it's the first meet cute. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. first when they first lock eyes and there's there's energy, there's chemistry there. And as the audience, you know, I mean, if you've ever seen a romantic comedy, you know the beats. Yes. And the moment these two lock eyes, you're just like Oh. make out yeah. like you're kind of willing it to happen because the fireworks are there straight away but this is the thing that this film does yeah is that it has that that uh, meet cute moment yeah and then it'll have it again and it'll have it again it does because obviously they go their separate ways and like well that was a chance encounter it'll never 
Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. And then he goes out to get, what, donuts orange and orange juice. juice. Yeah. And then as he's walking back, bang, they collide. Do you know what? I, I was very surprised because after their first meet, you get the orange juice. And that was like in all the trailers and it was in the music video as well. And so that was kind of like the big thing they would meet. Mm. But actually, them meeting in the corner shop, in the bookshop, I think is actually a little bit better because... Like I said, Hugh Grant kind of just plays off like, yeah, you know, I don't want to overburden you with me just gushing over you. And then Martin comes back in and, and he's just like, oh, you won't believe who I was just talking to. The, the the dumping of the orange juice, yeah, that's more, I find, the romantic comedy kind of fantasy. I was like, oh, I've just thrown orange juice on you. My house is literally there. <laughs> right? He's like, where's the red flags? Yeah, you, <laughs> like, <laughs> you've obviously got clothes on you you can change into. Why don't you come back to my house and you can go and get changed? And she's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think she, she's already been disarmed by his pleasant demeanor. She was, she and was. So she, I think she can trust him, yeah. yeah. And, uh, again, we get the comedy routine where he's putting away dirty dishes and tidying up. And <laughs> she's like, oh, man. bathroom's up there, bathroom's up there. Uh, the phone's up there as well. I'll respect your privacy. Yeah. And kind of waits for her to come down. She comes down and she's like, right, thank you. And I'll be on my way now. But she drops that kiss on him. Yes, that's, that's the moment. And and you're just like, you I mean, you're already waiting for it to happen because yeah. like, something's got to happen. But then they go with no plans to see each other again. Yeah. Until, like, time passes and uh, Spike's just like, hey, uh, Will, um, yeah, you had some phone calls. I wrote some of the messages down. Yeah, uh, yeah your mum called. Yeah, and that was probably about it. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> Somebody called you from the Ritz. And that's right, I just kept remembering now that he keeps getting phone calls yeah. from his mum about something wrong with her foot. We never go and find out. Yeah, we never visit mum. We, we never visit mum at all, you know, or to, or see if her foot gets lopped off or anything. But yeah, he gets this message to say, oh, yeah, she's staying at the Ritz. Uh, she's she's staying under a false name. And so then you get Hugh Grant phoning up the, the hotel and he's just like, look, you know, I'm, I'm looking for Miss Scott. I know she's not under that name at the moment. She's under a cartoon or, or, or a false name. And, and she's like, my, my flatmate's a complete idiot and can't remember. And then Spike's like, try Flintstone. <laughs> he's like, is there a Flintstone there? And he's like, oh, the hotel manager's like, yeah, I'll put you through. Oh, yeah, you need to come down to the hotel like right now. So Will goes down there. He's got his flowers. And you're thinking, oh, yeah, they're going to have their little date and a meet up. And it turns out that Anna's doing, like, interviews for, like, her newest film. press junket for her latest film, yeah. yeah. I also just want to point out that Spike is also wearing scuba gear. Yeah. And he's also <laughs> wearing his goggles, which he fills with smoke. I'm like, what yeah. is it with this man and putting either alcohol or smoke in his eyeballs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the fast way to the bloodstream, clearly. <laughs> I like that whole bit where it's like, why are you wearing this? And Spike's just like, well, one, I've got no clean clothes. <laughs> and two, I found this in your closet and thought, how cool is that? It's spacey. <laughs> But yeah, now we get the whole sequence where, yeah, he's mistaken identity kind of thing where they think he's there as a, a part of the press and like, what magazine are you for? And he looks down and he's like, a horse and hound. And the other guy's like, oh, interesting magazine. I'm oh, very good, very good. Like, in you come, start asking your questions. Now, I, I will admit, for, for, for some of you, all of this is cringy and you're probably thinking that we've lost the plot. No, the cringy that, stuff's later. Yeah, yeah, the cringy stuff goes later. <laughs> you know, and that there are thousand better movies out there that we could be reviewing but 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 i just want to say to you that you know when you're sat there and you're just going along with some of these cringy hugh grant moments he, i can't help but find him just brilliant as an actor that's why i think it, that's why i kind of hate him as well because he's just because he's got the looks as he's well he's got the looks as well <laughs> and he's just that good that he could like i said this this whole sequence here with this interview it's kind of like comedy but also cringy and nervous and will's just thinking on the spot when he's because he's because he gets ushered in you know to see anna and she's she's really kind of happy to see him but she's a little bit surprised because she left a message like two days before and he didn't get back to her which you know she's like why are you here now and so he's got to ask questions about this movie that he hasn't seen yeah they're doing a little bit of role playing <laughs> spice up their relationship already <laughs> and so her manager or whatever he's there first and so they're asking you know will's asking questions about are there any horses in this movie and she's like no and it's he's set like, in space it's set in space i like it. it's called was it helix and she's got that weird bob helm yeah there. and he actually does go and watch it later on in the movie so you get this weird kind of sci-fi fucking julia roberts one i was like you know what she needs to do more sci-fi movies she, does, yeah, she yeah. does but it's it's when like the manager goes out the room and they have their like quick 
talking about how they wanted to meet up and she's like how did you expect this to go and he's like well you know i was going to lean over and maybe kiss the girl and so once again you're building up like oh, they're gonna have a <laughs> moment and then the manager comes back in and shatters the whole thing yeah it's, i mean it's because the whole thing is that escapist fantasy of just being a normal guy yeah yeah and having you know this wonderful famous beautiful actress or actor whatever come into your life yeah and those, that you know it's that that juxtaposition of both of their lives but that's what also makes it interesting you also that fantasy of it could happen well you know? I, I like to think about it as as first off it's like a cinderella story yeah, yeah. hugh grant is cinderella mm -hmm. you know and and anna scott is the prince trying to find the person to fall in love with but on top of that you also get i mean it's not huge for the story but you do get some good kind of emoting from julia roberts that even though she's super famous and super rich and, and world known and everybody loves her and loves her films and blah 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 she's unhappy yeah she's lonely but that's why i also like the framing of her on that giant sofa yeah just and and it's just her in the shot on that sofa and she looks seems so small yes there and i'm like that's yeah for me that was the way the, the film language is saying look she is actually humbled yeah and a normal down-to-earth person at the same time yeah yeah whilst all of this is going on around her and and they they usher will off so that he can interview other people <laughs> right. about this movie it's just some comedic that montages that he's not seen all these <laughs> montages but it's the fact that she wanted to keep him around because um, this thing that Anna was going to go to that night has been cancelled and so she can spend some time with Will. And he's like, oh shit, I've got my sister's birthday party to go to. Um, and she, would you like to come? And she's like, okay. And so you're like, wow, this is this is a bit shocking. Like, you know, this world, it wouldn't happen nowadays. 25 years later, a, a famous film star would just go to a normal person's house. There'd be fucking security guards <laughs> and snipers on the roof and fucking phone tapping, all that shit nowadays. But... 1999 they could do that and so she goes to this house and you get just a really nice collection of really just great british it's wholesome. actors <laughs> yeah you've got is it, is it darling from blackadder is the right. cook yeah you know and and you know he's got his 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 wife who's a, another famous british actor actress but she's in a wheelchair um and we're, we're told that she she had a fall like six months to a year that's before. right there's a bit of a dark moment towards the end of the party where they're all having a pity party well yeah uh, for, in, for and for whoever, exactly for the last brownie yeah and so they're all sharing stories about woe is my life and yeah it cuts dark when you find out yeah that she can't no longer have children that she's now paralyzed after and she fell down the stairs you yeah. Know, yeah it's oh that's damn dark. yeah but but, but the fact that this this friend stuff is so kind of really, like you said, warm and inviting that when they open the door, you know, and he sees Will there and then he sees Anna Scott, you know, the, the husband's kind of taken back and he takes it to the wife and the wife's like, oh, my fucking God, <laughs> you know, like right. she, she's taken back as well. And then you get Honey turn up. You know, played by Emma Chambers, who I absolutely loved as Alice and Vicar Dibley. Right, and then yeah. when I found out that she'd passed away, it really fucking hurt me. So when I saw her in this film again, I had to get a bit teary eyed. Yeah. Because she, she just plays this wonderful, bubbly, normal person who's yeah. coming in to see, you know, it's her birthday. And all of a sudden you've got this famous actress in front of you that your, your brother's bought as his date. You know, and she goes on that splurge and she's like, I, I just believe that we could be the bestest friends ever. Right. And that we could always <laughs> hang out and all. And I've believed for some time now that, that, that we could be best friends. So what do you think? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Now, interestingly, in the original script, she was going to be running a record store across the road from the bookstore oh, right. and be the love interest and be the one that Will eventually settles with instead of the movie star. Oh, wow. But that all got rewritten out and then they turned her into the sister character instead. Nice, nice. Which I was like, you know what? I'm actually glad of that because the whole triangle thing is yeah. so done to death. I was like, you know what? I actually prefer the dynamic and this family of friends yes which feel really connected they're all odd in their own individual way but it is such an ensemble that it also feels grounded and real yeah so well done that you then also can buy into the fairy tale love story that we're primarily following yes yes and like you said you have that pity party thing which you know it starts off dark with them going around the table and talking about how low their lives are um and then it gets to anna and Anna is just like, well, I'd like to have a go. And they're like, well, you're a famous superstar and film star and all that. What have you got to be 
you know, moaning about in your life. And so she does go off of this list about how she's been on a diet for most of her life. And every time she gets into a relationship, if something goes bad, the, the, the papers will trail her, her name. Emotional all... and physical uh, bruises. Yeah. And, and it, it, the film does it very well by saying, look, she may look very happy, but there's some stuff going on in the background. But then the ghost goes, oh, fucking you know, good try, but no, we're not falling flat. And everybody's still getting paid fifteen million for a movie, so whatever. Yeah, it's like, oh, they all just break down in laughing, and it's just a wonderful little moment because when, when uh, Will and and some dark British humour there, though. yeah, I do like yeah, it. yeah. When when Will and Anna leave, you know, you realise that Anna's a little bit more adventurous than Will. Yeah, you know, she ju- she wants to jump over this gate into this public park, um, so that they can wander around there and. She says to him, you've got to come in. You've got to see this. It's really wonderful. And Hugh Grant jumps over the fence and he's just like, whoopsie daisy and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Oopsie daisy? Oopsie daisy. I haven't heard that in like 50 years. <laughs> yeah. And he comes into the park and he's just like, look, you know, it must be something really, really good to be in this park. And she lays that kiss on him. And you get a bit of the Ronan Keaton song, which I'm so glad they didn't overuse. They attempted. Yeah. They attempted because, I mean, they play it and then it must be like five or ten minutes later where they play it again. And I'm yeah. like... For me, the songs in the film are way too on the nose and they also really heavily date to the film. Mm. And it, it immediately reminded me of the late 90s, the moment these songs came on. And I was like, oh, I don't know. It probably worked better at the time, but now I'm like, it's just too much. It, 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 I suppose you're right if you're thinking of it in present day terms, yeah. but I watched it and it kind of took me back to 1999. Sure. So the music does fit in that way, but yeah, you probably get you probably get more from the movie if you did remove the music and just had kind of generic the music score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. romantic movies. Um, but Anna convinces Will to come back to the hotel and as they're getting ready to go in, she realises her boyfriend... Well, no, by... she, she she goes up and tells him to give her five minutes. Oh, yes, to get prepared, And then he yes. wanders up all ready to, to you know... Have... And, yeah, and it turns out that Alec Barwin has turned up in the movie. Cameo appearance. And, he, and he's not a guard. He's not a guard. Guard. <laughs> uh, but it turns out that he's Anna Scott's boyfriend. boyfriend. And that he's come over to see her because, you know... He's Mr. and whatnot. I mean, um, it, this is like the hour mark of the film, the halfway mark. And so yeah. this is the fi- this is the moment in the film where it reaches in, grabs your still beating heart, pulls it out, and yes. drops it in the bin. Yeah. And uh, it is it, it, and but it doesn't but it does it in slow motion almost because Will he takes on the role of like a, a bellboy essentially. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, yeah, what, you know, room service. And uh, he's like, right, yeah, you want some water? And then Baldwin's just like, yeah, and also take all this rubbish out. I want to empty that as well. Yeah. And of course, Anna Scott, she's just like, no, no, you don't need to do all that because she's trying to, I mean, well, I don't know what's going through her mind at this moment, but because we are in the position of Will yeah. and having our heart ripped out at, at the fact that she's kind of been deceitful. And that she's had the boyfriend this whole time. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, Will ends up leaving the hotel and just walking. We follow him out. We don't see what carries on in the hotel. So we are, from the entire of the, the entirety of this film's perspective, following Will. Yeah. And we follow him into misery, essentially, as you know the days go by. And he's just wallowing in this, this moment. But then we see on the newspapers that somebody has released some... Uh, Scandalous explicit, nude pictures. Yes, explicit photos of Anna Scott from when she was younger. Um, and there's a video and it could be a porno and things like that. And so she comes to the one place where she does kind of feel safe, where she doesn't think anybody is going to find her. And it's to Wills. And I, you know, I was a bit surprised, but then at the same time, I'm not surprised really, because I know how the movie's going to go. Is that, you know, like he opens the door and he's, you know, immediately struck surprised that she's there. You know, he's not upset. He's not annoyed. He's not going to start an argument with her. He immediately just, in Hugh Grant, cringy kind of British style, he just lets her in and goes, hey, I'll run you a bath. And I'm like, man, sometimes you, you put the rest of us fucking men to shame. We've got to double down (laughs) twice as much because you're allowing, you know, this beautiful woman back into your life after she's ripped your heart out and you're just going to make her a bath. And then when she's in the bath, you get fucking Spike wandering into the toilet. And he, he obviously he's looking at the pictures as he walks in his right. the paper. <laughs> and then he walks in the toilet and he just sees her and she goes, you must be Spike. 
And he walks out. <laughs> he comes back in and he's like, just check in. Just check in. I love that. And he's like, thank you, God. You know? Hi. Just check in. Thank you, God. Yeah, because you get, again, what I'm calling him creepy is because later on, we're Will sleeping on the bed downstairs. Yeah. Anna's up in the bed upstairs and he wanders down. He's like, well, you're not going to, you know, <laughs> do you think I can have a crack at it? <laughs> and off he goes. <laughs> you're just like, oh, yeah. No, well, he's, he's told by Will not to do right, that. Yeah. Because obviously that's that's what Will's trying to do as well. But she's then, she's heartbroken. Yes. And she's she's kind of flirting with him the whole time that they she's been staying with him today. She's had a really wonderful day. They were rehearsing lines together. They were rehearsing yeah. lines. She was sitting on the sofa together, just kind of glancing at each other. And so you you know that the relationship is building. And so Anna comes down to him after Spike has left and the two of them end up actually spending the night together, which is really nice because, you know, we don't need a massive huge sex sequence. No. We don't need... This film went for the PG rating, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even just waking up the next morning and then two just chatting in bed, I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I'm don't... talking about boobs. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm interested. Yeah. And she's like, what, what, is, what do men find so fascinating about boobs? You like, every woman has them. <laughs> and then he makes the joke like, well, I mean, Meatloaf's got an impressive pair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is four months before Fight Club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hugh Grant knew. Big tip bar. Maybe he'd already gone to the club. Yeah. That's why he couldn't talk about it. Ah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he has a little peek under the covers. Like, <laughs> impressive. And you know what I have to say? Like, Julia Roberts has got one hell of a smile. Oh man, it's she... just just beautiful. And so they're you know post co- post coital energy together. Yeah. It's really sweet. And you know, and then she comes in. She's like, "I've made your breakfast in bed." Yeah, you know, it's just like, just... Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. She does it so natural. I've always seen. Like I said, she she could be the most hideous person in our private life that we don't know. But for me personally, I've always just looked at Julia Roberts as like all American, like mm-hmm. apple pie, like you know, like. <laughs> Like, if she brought me breakfast in bed the next morning, I'm like, I've got to marry this bitch. <laughs> I've got to marry. But the two of them go down the stairs, uh, and Will goes to the front door to, to get the papers or whatnot, and as he opens up the door, he's just met with just an army of photographers and cameras flashing. Obviously, he's still in his kind of pajamas and stuff, and he turns, and he closes the door, and... Uh, Anna comes running down. She's like, "Oh, what you been looking at? Huh? What's out there?" And he try and he wait. He doesn't really try to stop her. I held, held her back. Right. And be like, "Don't fuck it." But she has to, and she opens. I think the he's door. in shock for the most part. Yeah. yeah, she opens up the front door in just his shirt, and so immediately the the papers have already got her picture a as new well. scandal yeah and a new scandal to run with and she starts freaking out so she's got to call her manager she's got to call you know her pr people and whatnot to come Sp- and pick her up spike comes down in his pants <laughs> and he gets told the newspapers are out there and i didn't think about it until this like it's been like fucking 20 years since i watched this movie and it only dawned on me that as soon as he went outside in his pants everybody would have thought that she'd had a threesome. Right, yeah, yeah. I didn't think about it before. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he's there posing as well. Yeah, he's like, I'm a... Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, and then he God. comes back inside and he's looking in the mirror and he's like, yeah, firm buttocks. <laughs> yeah, that went down a tree. Yeah. Like, but yeah, the, the real drama, though, is the real switch in Anna Scott's behavior now yes. where... I guess a bit of the the Hollywood monster comes out. She does, Where yeah. she tears Will a, a new one you know, belittling him, talking him down, saying he's has no understanding of the circles that she walks in. Well, she believes that he's the one who set it up. And she he? also believes that he was the one who ran his mouth because he was too excited because I've got a celebrity, I'm going to bang her, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so, yeah, and he's just trying, he's just kind of bemused and confused, yeah. I guess, because he's like, Let's, uh, the newspaper's printed today, there'll be cat litter, you know, lining tomorrow, so yeah. you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, for her, it's everything. The, yeah. Her public image is everything. It's her star power, everything. And so, yeah, she storms off, she gets carried away, and again, this as well, like, how many yeah. more times are these two going to get separated? <laughs> I guess it wasn't meant to be. That's it. I mean... Th- that's the, that's the part. I I said this Gary Ford turned the camera on. I felt that they could have they could have dropped thirty minutes from this movie. I mean, a two hours feels good, but at the same time, when you're when you're stretching out certain plot points that other movies would have sorted out like a while ago. I just want to say that the first cut of the film yeah. was three and a half hours long, so they already cut ninety minutes which is a full-length movie, out of the film 
before we get to the two hour runtime. I'm so, so fucking like <laughs> director's cut. I'll Anyone? be honest, like what more could you have had to add to the story? Like Well, I, I reckon like Anna's story because true. it is yeah. one sided. Yeah, it is really true. is one sided. It is very one sided. We so, just see it from yeah. Wills. If we'd seen Anna's side, we'd probably be more sympathetic to her, empathic. I mean, we'd have yeah. wanted that. Because like you said, in in a way, it's like a reverse uh pretty woman. You know, Will is the the the, the commoner. I suppose, you know, and Anna is just like this rich figure who's trying to hold on to her status. And so, so this, this next, this next kind of 30 minutes where, where Will's on his own, you know, he, he, he's not even thinking about Anna. Like, well, they, his friends set him up with all these random girls, the girl from the it. office, the girl from across the street, we, we you know, see, our neighbor. <laughs> yeah. We see a montage of like dates and stuff. And one of them he does actually genuinely like. And part of me is just like, I kind of wish I hadn't seen that now because I kind of feel bad for those girls. And I think Will's a bit of a, I mean, I know, yes, he's getting off a relationship, but he's just come off the back of Anna fucking Scott. He's right. One of the no biggest. No one's going to compare now. Like, <laughs> Giselle from the friggin' office isn't going to even come <laughs> close to whatever he's thinking of a woman is. And so, like, I could have easily just, you could easily just, for me, remove uh, the whole friend stuff and kept the focus on Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts. But having the friend stuff in there actually grounds the movie into more reality than having one of those crazy fantasy love stories where you know the 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 commoner just gets the rich girl because she falls desperately in love with him you've got to have all these extra things in like like i like i said i like the fact that honey his sister has a bit of a background because she 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 says that she's getting engaged doesn't she i'm getting engaged tonight um and i hope you're all going to be happy for me and then she turns to spike and goes oh by the way it's you and he's like what <laughs> right like, <laughs> Oh really? And and a part of me is just like, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm glad for that. I wanted yeah. Spike to get now, somebody. It, and... it feels like it came out of nowhere. It but did, I also yeah. put it down to the fact that we're following Will yeah. and the fact that he's so in his own bubble, in his own world, he's kind of not even paying, he's attention, not even paying attention to yeah. the stuff that's going on around him. And there's a really great sequence where we see the passage of time. Yes. And it's it's a seamless single shot. Well, it's actually four shots edited together, but it's seamless in the mm. edit. So it looks like one continuous shot as he goes through the seasons. Yeah. And we see this pregnant lady. We see his sister in a relationship. Then we see that relationship break up. Then we see the lady with a baby. Mm. And he's just like, as the season changes just behind him. market stalls. He's yeah. just walking along the street with market stalls. It's, it's a great wonderful. sequence. But at the same time... The piece of music, you know, there's no sunshine. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, oh, yeah, we get it, movie. We get it. The image alone tells us this, but the song's just like, do you get it yet? He's heartbroken, okay? <laughs> I'm heartbroken. He's heartbroken. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so, well, you know, he's, he, you're hearing about his friend who's lost his job, and you're hearing about the the, the restaurants being closed down, and that Honey's about to get uh, to, to, to meet Spike and get engaged. And so Will's told that actually Anna Scott is in London and she is filming a film on Hampstead Heath. And I thought it was absolutely amazing that Will could walk on to a film set, no security <laughs> stop him. Well, I mean, the security no, guy does stop does. him at a point. Mate, he basically walks in front of the cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> he walks past everybody. Nobody well, like stops he says, him. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> <Chill>. <laughs> yeah, one of the security guards is like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm here to meet Anna Scott. And he's like, I don't think so. I don't believe you. And then Anna goes, no, I know him. And so security guard's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, the two of them chat. And like I said, if you like, you could easily cut out the friend bit because when the two of them meet again, it's as if, it's as if that time transition has happened, but you haven't needed to see well, it. it. I mean, it's awkward because he does the wave at her and then he kind of recoils the wave because yeah. it's not reciprocated. And you're just like, oh, like, it's awkward. Yeah. And then she, after a moment, she gets away from her entourage, comes over and says, look, I'm filming, last day, stressed, we're crunching, wait, and I'll come see you afterwards. But it's gr it's brilliant because the, the film is, what, an 18th century, 17th century kind of production. There's horses, right. which is horse and how. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's based on, on a writer that he had mentioned to her earlier yeah. in the and, movie. And that's that... what makes you think she took that role to honour him. Exactly. Um, but he sits and he's waiting for her to finish her 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 scene and he can overhear her through her 
microphone. And she says that he's nothing. Yeah. And not, nothing to worry about. Yeah. And Which it, crushes him because he overhears it. It's like it's like what you said, though. I've just realized. It's like a third time where he, there's like... Yeah. Rip this yeah. heart out. Because you're sat there with him, like you're almost outraged, you're, you're like, heartbroken, yeah, you're, like, oh, you're wondering bitch. whether she meant it, was she just talking to some rando yeah. and not meaning it? But yeah, he takes off the headphones and just goes goes back to his work, goes back to his office. Yeah, and 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 she comes to she comes to the shop, doesn't she? With a present, which With is present. wrapped, but she says not to open it until she's gone. Yeah, and, and but this is her most vulnerable moment. This is where she confesses. Yeah, you know, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy, hoping that he'll love her. And yeah. you're just like, Niagara Falls. Yeah. You're like, Jesus, come on. <laughs> so we yeah, get together. Yeah, it's cliched and it's tropey, but when it's Julia Roberts doing it, my God, do they sell it? She did, yeah. And he goes, actually, I'm not interested. You can go now. <laughs> and you're like, what? Yeah, you're like, off you go. <laughs> See you later. But at the same time, you're like, good on you, because like she's put you through the ringer. You've made you miserable. But you still love her. And, and, and that's it. He, he sits there with his friends and he, he tells them and they're like... Have I done the right thing? And they're like, yeah, you did. You spared yourself that emotional turmoil <laughs> until Spike turns Spike up. Spike and goes, you prick. <laughs> You're like, right? And then his, his, um, uh, um, his banker friend is just like, actually, it was a good thing, right? Like, it's great if anyone really wants to go out with you. Yeah. And then you do that pan around all of them and they're all like, yeah, you fucked up. <laughs> It's like, right, it's in the, the car, the fourth act, you yeah. know, we're going to go and rescue this relationship. And so they jump, they throw everybody in the car. I like the fact that the lady in the wheelchair is going to stay and her, her husband's just like, no, no, you're we're coming. coming. Yeah. You're coming. We're all doing this. And they race around in the car. And Reese Siffens has to get out. Spike has to get out, doesn't he? Do Stop traffic. traffic. He's like, go, go, go. And she's like, I love you. And he's like, you're my hero. Yeah. <laughs> and they finally get Will uh, to the hotel because Anna is planning on leaving. This is her last interview. And so people were questioning her about her next film, um, you know. And she tells them I'm leaving this night. Yes, uh, oh. she's she, she's not. She's she she's she's gone. You know, she she's like I said. If we'd had that extra hour, maybe we'd have seen all the stuff that Anna's gone through to keep this relationship afloat. But we don't have that. But what we do have from Anna is her trying to get Will back through all the confusion and the mistakes that they have had and he's turned her down because you really think that he should do because why does he fucking need her but in fairness he's fucking in love with her and so he races there and they're like well what what about this guy and she's like oh nothing We're never going to see him again and then Hugh Grant kind of steps out Will steps out and everyone goes oh, it's him and Will starts to question her you know like what happens if I'm just a guy standing here telling a girl that he loves her and you're like, oh my god! <laughs> Maybe the famine or the fear may turn each day into a heaven or a hell. Yeah, everyone gets excited because then it's like, oh, one more question. It's like, oh, Anna, like, when are you leaving England now? She's like, oh, I'm staying indefinitely. Yeah. And everyone's like, yeah, love. And you know, one guy randomly kisses another girl. It's just like, <laughs> it's contagious. Love is everywhere. Love is all around <laughs> us. Sorry, that was the yeah. other film. No. And then we cut to a montage of the wedding and... And oh, then and going nice. to, the, to the movie premieres together and yeah. stuff like that, and him being supportive. Yeah. And then they end up on the bench like they had done when they'd had their first kiss, but it's daytime now, you know, and you can see that Anna's actually got a little bit of a bump, so she's pregnant. And the movie just, it just ends happy. Yeah. Which was <laughs> nice for a fucking change. Right. Man, it's been weird since I saw a movie that ended in such a happy tone that I'm just like, man, now reality really sucks. I, 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 <laughs> just I like, like, yeah. oh, back I mean, to normal life. <laughs> I was waiting there in the credits, like, I'm sure a shot's going to ring out or <laughs> right. something, an alien invasion. I'm sure there's an explosion going on somewhere. I mean, I was very surprised. Not, not that I'm trying to be harsh on anything, but you can see that this film's 25 years old because Hugh Grant didn't get robbed once in London. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ian, what were your favourite or most memorable parts? Oh, man. Um, I, I, I've got to give it to Reese Vans as Spike. He does... He gives the film just that extra punch of comedy in his sequences. Like, like you could have just had it, you know, Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant and then just that they're friends. Um, and it would have still been funny, but you needed that oddball, off-the-wall character... <laughs> To just take, to just make your mind go, oh yeah, yeah, this this movie's just absolute fun. So whenever you see him, 
you know, when he's blowing the smoke into the scuba gear and he's putting it over his eyes. I like that same joke where it's played on later where Hugh Grant's looking for his glasses and he can't find them, so he has to take the scuba glasses with him because they're prescription. And then Spike finds the glasses because he's sitting <laughs> yeah. on them. Um, I love Honey Thacker, you know, being the sister. Just her whole bit where she's unloading onto Anna Scott. That's your that's your typical sibling, you know, being overexcited by the older brother bringing back a new toy. And, oh, my God, it's the toy that I've all wanted. Um, you know, there's just the stuff with Hugh Grant and and um, Julia Roberts is really easy to do because they're, they're both fabulous, you know, at their art. They're really good at their craft. Um, but the two bits I think really outstand are is that first bit in the shop where they have their first meeting and then the last one. You know, where he kind of tells her no. Yeah. And you're kind of like, what? Are you fucking crazy? But at the same time, you've still got another 45 minutes of the fucking movie to go. <laughs> so I can't get together yet. Um, I don't want to steal all the movie because there are some really bad scenes. But I'm not going to steal that long transition one, even though it's a good one. I'm going to leave that one for going. <laughs> Well, I'll start with that one. It's a great, <laughs> it's a great transition shot. as he goes through the seasons on a technical level, the way they filmed it, the way that it's stitched together. Mm. It's seamless. It's just the music that's annoying, <laughs> but it's a visual uh, tr a treat. It's really good. Uh, Spike's first t-shirt. I actually forgot the first one he wears is um, I Like Blood and it's got the Xenomorph poking yes, out. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, great, great, great first one. moment. I mean, yeah. that's early in the film. So I was like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm already happy. I like the sequence where he's uh, where he's pretending to work for the the horse and hound and going through all of the uh, yeah, the interviews, the interviews yeah. and he gets to the girl and and uh, she's like I'm working with Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> and he's like oh what's it like working with a famous Italian director it's just like, oh jeez he just is so out of his element total fish out of water but some great sequences there that's a very young Misha Barton it is yeah yeah Ooh. we actually just saw her recently in uh, the Sixth Sense oh well. yes yeah. yes we did yeah. yes. Spike posing for the press in the front door. Yeah. Just <laughs> great moment. And then him strutting his stuff in front of the mirror. Great. I mean, yeah, all the Spike stuff, all, all the recent event stuff is great. Really fun. Anna's speech about uh, aging female actresses and yes. how in 10 years from now she'll be seen as, you know, the actress that was, was you know, that was popular and past her prime. Yeah. And, and uh, the way that she talks about her diet and everything else, it's like, yeah, you see all the war wounds and it feels very true to life. And then she starts talking about plastic surgery on the yeah. nose, on the chin. Yeah. I don't know whether Julia Roberts has done, maybe, Possibly. you know, but you have to maintain that image and that, that sphere of Hollywood, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. And so, yeah, we get a couple of guests, like real good home truths about behind you, the scenes of Hollywood. You really. do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, th that that scene really uh, cut quite nicely. And yeah, I guess like the scene that I think uh, like upset me or hurt me the most is the scene where uh, yeah, Alec Baldwin is at in the hotel and uh, basically <laughs> just treats him like the bellboy. Take out the rubbish, take out the trash, and out you go with it. It's just like ah, oh, it was soul crushing. It's yeah. soul crushing. And then of course it's it's got to be. Anna's speech to him in the in the bookstore when she's brought the present, which you also find out by the way is something that he had a rep, you know a, uh, an imitation copy of it in his room that she notices. Yeah, yeah. And then she had the genuine real article and left it as a gift. It's just like yeah, it's very sweet, very sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Uh, but before we go on to your, your closing, Ian, mm -hmm. there was uh, like one goof, I suppose, that I kind of want to want to call out. OK, yeah. And uh, it's to do with the extras. Right. Now, like five minutes into the film, like one of the first pans we get of the shop, we get I mean, they they actually thought ab against filming in London. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's a pretty big populated area. Yes. Yes. And uh, they thought, well, you know what? We'll just replicate it. We'll just build a duplicate set. Yeah. And then in the end, they went, screw it. Let's actually film in Notting Hill. And oh. they did. Oh, okay. And so a lot of the people in the background, they're not all extras. They're real people. I thought that. Yeah. I was just like, but there's some a, natural All of ability. the people were really, for the most part, really well behaved yeah. and were excited that a movie was happening on their front doorsteps. Okay, yeah. And so but. It was, but there obviously are some extras. <laughs> and in that first pan shot, if you look down the alleyway to the left of the store, there's a woman there like putting the coat on of this girl. Yeah. And about the 20 minute mark, when he goes back there, there's that same woman and that same child in the exact same position. <laughs> and then after the, the, the long seasonal change walks, about an yeah, hour and a half into the movie where he cut the pan goes past, the two extras are still <laughs> in the exact same position. I'm like, you've been there for like a year. <laughs> <laughs> like how difficult is it to do that zipper up on that coat? I know they could get jammed sometimes, oh, but... That's, that's bad continuity. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is. But uh, I mean, it, it's so fleeting. But yeah. when you notice it, you notice, you notice it. it. <laughs> Ian, do you recommend Notting Hill? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm very surprised at this. I, I thought Gary and I were going to debate about this movie and talk about, you know, the differences of why I'd like it and why you'd hate it and all those different things. But I'm so glad that we've had such positive conversation about this that I just have to wholeheartedly recommend Notting Hill. Now, I will say it is not for everybody because not everybody loves a good rom-com. But if you are looking for something nice to watch with your partner and you've never seen it or never even contemplated even putting it on to watch with your partner, be them male or female, check it out, chuck it on. It's fun. Hugh Grant is great. I can't believe I'm saying that after all this time because I have pretty much hated this motherfucker for most of my life. But he is like a national British treasure. I'll probably regret saying this at some point in the future when he does something stupid like go back to Hollywood Boulevard or something. I don't know. But at the moment, he's not doing too bad. Same can be said for Julia Roberts. She could turn out to be a secret Nazi in about 10 years. I don't know. But at the moment, she's a wonderful, outstanding, charming, beautiful, just... She's, she's just an amazing actress in my eyes. And I think this isn't her best performance. By far, no way. But it's definitely one of those performances that you just go, wow, Julia Roberts was really good in that. You know, like Gary said, the music's not great. And a lot of it is British stylized humor that some other people in the world might not get. But the basics are there. You know, a guy meets a girl. They fall in love. Things happen. Will they get together? They might. They might do. We never know. Watch the movie. Yeah, I'm certainly recommending Notting Hill. This is a really good, warm and heartfelt romantic comedy that delivers the sweetness and the laughs. Hugh Grant really shines with his blend of charm and self-effacing nature. He's very humble and believable and likable as the lead. Julia Roberts is equally luminous here with her magnetic presence and beautiful smile and down-to-earth personality. They both share a great deal of on-screen chemistry that you root for them easily as their vastly different worlds collide before they really open up to each other. The script by Richard Curtis was packed with great dialogue, sharp wit, charm, heartbreak and love and only ever so slightly at times felt cliched as the actors really sell you on those key moments. The rest of the cast are all great, a wonderful family of strange friends played by great English comedy actors. The film doesn't outstay its welcome at two hour runtime with a good pace, excellent direction and solid performances. The score is great, really pulls on those heartstrings, but the song choices were really on the nose and distracting. So yeah, a really good rom-com, warm, fun and well worth a watch. Can the most famous film star in the world fall for just an ordinary guy? Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. 